teachers of Reddit. How have you secretly rewarded or punished a student? It's only a little thing but when I'm marking assignments, if I can see that a kid has really tried I'll write them a little note like, Great effort Michael. I can really see your algebra skills developing. You have come a long way since I started teaching you and I know you're going to get a great grade at the end of the year if you keep working this hard. I think there's something really nice about a written note. I do this especially for the quiet kids who might not want me to draw attention to them in class but it's my way of saying I do see you working hard even though you think you are invisible. I have a student this year who makes my life heck. She is blatantly disrespectful, nasty to me and classmates, and thinks I'm her personal waitress. Part of this is that every day she tries to hand me her work when I'm running around the room getting class started, but she does it in this manner that implies I'm her maid. I tell her every day to get up and put it in the turn-in box like everyone else. She be and whines until some other classmate does it for her. Thursday she left her extra credit, 2 points on her test, not that much, on her desk like it was my job to go get it after class. I threw it away. I'm not sure this is punishment as much as expecting her to follow directions, but I can't honestly say I would have done the same to other students. Small, petty justice, but I did it nonetheless. I used to always show up late for my 10th grade science class. One day, we had a little chapter review quiz at the start of class, and naturally, I am a minute or two late. So I walk over to my desk, and the teacher hands me my quiz. It's all really advanced questions comprised of polysyllabic biology jargon that I've never seen. Question after question is material that I'm pretty confident we have never ever covered in the class. After about 2 minutes, I look up to see how everyone else is doing on their quiz. Everybody was watching me and when I looked up, they all started laughing. The teacher had printed up a single fake quiz with super complicated biology questions just to frick with whatever kid ended up showing up last to the quiz. Ms. Cohen, you were a fun teacher. Thumbs up. Edit. Since a lot of people asked, this was at Bard High School in Manhattan. A local music store was going out of business where a lot of students rented band orchestra instruments. I had a student who has a serious lifelong disability, but she still participated in many things and is an outstanding student and person in general. She went through some scary medical things, but never complains, and is so genuinely happy. Her family is blue collar hard working, but I knew her medical expenses were a constant in her family's life. The store was offering a discount plus their normal rent to own discount for students who had instruments to outright purchase them before they closed for good. I contacted them and they let me pay the remaining cost of her instrument and kept my identity a secret. Edit. Wow. I was beat after a day of Halloween fun at work. Fourth graders in full costume at 8.15am. Yikes. And it is crazy to see what I woke up to now. Just for your information. I am a lady music teacher. Thank you also for the gold. I am glad so many people had wonderful experiences in music. My minus R is to please support and demand your local school district fund music and art other creative programs properly. Due to unfunded mandates, funding disparities, and them seeing how special areas do not fit neatly into common core evaluations, programs available for students are continually at risk. As someone who's played an instrument for the majority of my life, and has had music education and music teachers shape who I am. I want to thank you so much for doing this. Had a kid who was working a job late into the night in order to help his family while trying to finish his senior year in high school. His dad had been laid off and his mother was disabled, so they were barely making it. He told me that he worked late into the night and he had to miss days of school, too. He did the best he could in my class but just couldn't pass after missing so much class. He was a senior and a good kid who needed my English class to pass. Figuring that the kid's life was already hard enough, and that his family was struggling enough, I secretly added some points to assignments he hadn't done so that his final grade went from a 50% to a 61%, just enough to pass and graduate. I don't like giving away grades, and I never told him. He just thought he had passed. I used to play poker in chemistry with my friends. We always seemed to lose decks of cards so one of us bought a 4 pack. 5 minutes into our game, our chem teacher noticed and confiscated the deck. But little did he know we had 3 more. 
until a minute later when he confiscated the second. By the end of the lesson he'd taken all four decks. We collected them at the end and went on our way. Cut to next chemistry lesson and we're playing poker again. After 10-15 hands, we realize that no aces have come up. We looked through the deck and only counted 48 cards. Bit of a pain. But we had 4 so we could use the aces from another deck. Except none of those had them too. We looked up at our teacher and he was waving 16 aces at us. He said if we didn't all pass our upcoming test, he would give the cards back to each of us at parents evening with our parents present. I was the student in this case. At the very start of 10th grade, my mother was in a motorcycle accident, where she should have died, ended up in IQ, various hospitals, etc. for over a year. Meanwhile I have arthritis, so I get sick easily, psoriatic, genetic. During the third term, I was sick for a week, on top of already being behind from getting 2 hours a night to work on assignments because I went to visit my mom daily. I go to my European history teacher to explain it, and he immediately dismissed all my missing homework assignments for the term because he knew I was an excellent student who didn't deserve a poor grade for this. His words, not mine. I owe that man my 1B plus from that year, and he's been a major reason that I'm so motivated to do well for the rest of my high school career, along with my mom still being around. It makes all the difference in the world to have a teacher like that. I had a parent who was diagnosed with a terminal illness in high school. Two teachers in particular cut me enough slack that I didn't destroy my GPA, then wrote me amazing letters for uni. Four years later, they attended the wake. I'll never forget them. If a student can dance on an essay where they obviously have no idea what they're talking about, I'll give them some credit for the attempt. For example, I ask you to discuss three major causes of the French Revolution, causes we covered in class. You don't know them, but, in the essay, you try to extrapolate some possible causes using information you do know or attempt to morph the question into a topic you're prepared to discuss. I call that dancing, because a good performance can be moving and a poor performance is laughable. I've gone as high as 75% credit for a good dance. I am HO. It demonstrates a better mastery of the material than actually parroting back what I've been talking about for the last 4 weeks. On the other hand, if you pull any of that crap that shows up on 9 gag, like give this drawing of some stupid meme an A or whatever, I will burn your butt for the rest of the semester. You so much as emit a semicolon, and it's half credit at best. You so much as emit a semicolon, and it's half credit at best. True in computer science as well. I teach a high school elective course aka not as important as English or math, and I had a class that was 23 boys and 2 girls. If you are a teacher, you know this is a terrible, terrible setup. Teenage boys are definitely pack animals and are constantly in a struggle to establish their hierarchy especially if females are limited. Anyways, these guys were a constant ball of energy and were always doing stupid, stupid guy stuff. They went through a phase where they cup checked each other. This went on for weeks. Little Johnny in the back would walk up to sharpen his pencil. Bam. Cup check. So one day in class on student, I'll call him Travis. Asked to go to the restroom. I gave him a pass and sent him on his way. The rest of the class was quietly working when another boy in the back yelled out oh my god. Travis just texted me a picture of his balls. Now I know how these guys have acted all semester and I also know the zero tolerance mess that school systems deal with. I knew this could end up very, very badly if it was dealt with by administration. Immediately got the kid to delete the text. Calmed the riotous laughter going on and somehow managed to get them all back on task. But Travis wasn't back yet and I sure as heck wasn't going to let him smugly get away with this. So I called his mom and had her on hold. Told her that Travis had done something that I did not approve of but I felt it best if he would explain his actions to her instead of me. On a side note, I teach animal anatomy so terms like testicle, scrotum, etc are common vocabulary. So in walks Travis with this crap eating grin on his face. He thinks he has succeeded until I casually look up from my desk and let him know his mom is on the phone. There in front of the entire class he had to explain that he had just taken a picture of his testicles and sent it via text to his buddy in class. 
you could literally hear mom screaming through the phone. Once he finished, I spoke with her and told her that I felt the situation would be best handled by her and thanked her for her time. That day, I won. On behalf of jackasses everywhere, including myself when I was in high school, thank you for handling this perfectly. That kid will never know how much you saved his bacon. In some school administrator's hands, his stupid but essentially harmless act could have landed him on sexual offender lists for the rest of his life. I was the student, and the secret kindness was from my guidance counselor, not a teacher. I skipped class a good bit in my senior year, but I was a huge goody two-shoes, it wasn't a rebellion thing, just trying to handle some pretty heavy life circumstances at the time. I never went far, and most of it was just trying to stay afloat in schoolwork. I got caught skipping class one of those times. I was hiding in the school auditorium studying for my math exam later that day while my friend worked in the tech booth. This was the second time I'd been caught skipping that week, and since I was a girl and my friend was a dude, the teachers who caught us were sure we were up to something a little more devious than studying. They made very clear that I was in huge trouble, and that my guidance counselor, who knew me and what was going on in my life quite well, would be called. When she came in, she looked terrifying and told me I would would have to come to her office because this was such a big offense, and told the other teachers that I'd be punished to the fullest extent. I was appropriately shaking in my little goody two-shoes boots, but when we got to her office, she dropped what was apparently just an angry act, and quietly told me that I could stay in her office and finish studying for that math exam for the rest of the period, and essentially just kept watch for me the whole time. That moment really stuck with me, and the rest of her kindness throughout all of high school absolutely got me through a few of the shittiest years of my life. Kids who misbehave aren't always frick ups, man great teachers and mentors can keep sight of that and really make a difference. Comma I was appropriately shaking in my little goody two shoes boots. That's such an awkwardly funny sentence. You made me smile with that. I'm not a teacher, but this happened to me. Long story short, my jackass father was trying to have me taken away from my mother. He contacted my guidance counselor, SP, and I am still not sure what their arrangement was. All I know is that she started pulling me out of class and buying me candy and comic books, and she kept asking me weird questions about my home life. Before too long, she called me to her office and had a stack of 12 comics on her desk. Every Marvel and DC book that came out that week, she told me they were mine. But first I had to talk to a social worker and tell her a few small lies about my home life that would add up to me getting forced to live with my father. I told the social worker what was going on, and she called my mom, gave me the comics, and sent me home for the day. Never saw the guidance counselor again. Whoa, that's fricked up. When I was in 9th grade, I had a principal named Dr. Ridgeway. My life was just a big ball of crap. To be honest, I was bullied, living in a rage motel. It was trashy, that we couldn't afford, and I self-harmed. Dr. Ridgeway went above and beyond for me. She obviously had to get the bullies, and she did. Anytime I felt the urge to self-harm, in school, I was in her office. She would let me sit outside the building and listen to music so I could calm down. And if it got too bad, I was allowed to call mom and go home. No questions asked. The most important thing she did. She asked for the people who donated a lot of money to the school. To help pay for us to live in a motel for another week. She did that three times till we got on our feet to live in an apartment. I've never had a teacher school worker. Mean so much to me. I need to go visit her soon. I have a little activity called secret compliments that I often do when I'm starting up or taking over a new class. It's a good way to get to know the students and also just try to increase the positivity in the room. Well one time I got a bad vibe from a class right away and I could kind of tell that all the other students dislike this one kid. Well I did the secret compliments game anyway, where all of the kids write down nice things about another randomly chosen student and then I read them at the front of the class. Sure enough. The kid who had to write a compliment for the class pariah wrote a nasty message instead of a compliment. I changed it on the spot to a nice compliment without anyone knowing, except the kid who wrote it of course, and I made eye contact with him the whole time I was reading. I also purposefully saved his own compliment for last, 
to make him sweat a little and wonder if anyone had written anything nice for him, or if I was going to read it. At the end of the class I took him aside and privately told him that he had a new homework assignment, to write 10 nice things about the class pariah and give them to him personally, and that for every other kid he could get to the do the same thing. I would give both him and the other kid a candy bar, but not to tell anyone about the candy bars or that I told him to do it. I'm a strong believer in the fake it till you make it school of thought. The next day the class pariah had like 100 nice notes, which I of course read and checked over first, and I gave a sack full of candy bars, coffee crisp, I love coffee crisp, to the other guy to distribute. He got to see how much nicer it felt to be nice and became somewhat of a class leader. Maybe he was before I came in, but I like to think I had some positive effect on him. The year was a rough one right from the beginning. I was teaching 4th grade and within the first week I had 3 or 4 major incidents. Seeing this group needed bonding I found a bicycle repairman who had a bunch of bikes in front of his lawn. I arranged for a bicycle field trip along an old railroad grade that had been paved and paid the $3 each to rent the bikes for the day. The old railroad track had a slight upgrade in it so the kids would have to keep pedaling not getting too far in the distance. So they didn't get too far ahead I positioned an adult in front with me in back. We were dropped off at the beginning of the trail when the bus driver said, I'm not going to be sticking around waiting for you and drove off. Oh well, I had a cell phone. Anyway the kids were anxious to take off so I sent the parent. Only one volunteered. Off. Everybody took off except for one rather large girl who stood there looking rather confused. This girl was the source of a lot of the issues in this class. A princess of the first order and famous for her tantrums. I asked what was wrong. She answered. I don't know how to ride a bike. She wasn't snotty about it but just factual. With the class riding off in the distance I told her how to pedal while I grabbed the center of her handlebars. We both pedaled that 8 miles with me cajoling her, motivating her all 8 miles. It was at the last mile when she finally got the balance part and finished beside me. I dang near tore my left arm off that day and every time after that when she started in on her princess act I'd hold my left shoulder as if it pained me something fierce. Finally in March or April she would look at me saying Mr. Ah, your shoulder can't be sore anymore it was something we kept between us all year. Obligatory not a teacher, but, the kid who sits behind me in high school honors physics class is named Nico. Nice kid, funny, sarcastic, likes to joke and mess with the teachers, but knows when to shut the frick up. Teacher is named Mr. Thompson, old guy, late 60s or early 70s, and was teaching at this same high school when my dad was a freshman here way back in 1976. We've only been in school 9 weeks and I could fill a thread with stories from this class. Mr. T had already entered my top 3 favorite teachers list after the first class. His philosophy is simple, you respect me, I respect you. We took a test over vectors last week, which required the use of graphing calculators. 10 minutes left in class, and Nico is the last one to finish. Turns in test, goes back to seat, punches a few things in his calculator, then goes, son of a, he sighed loudly, then said, ridden with despair, Mr. T, already slightly amused, Thompson asked what the problem was, Nico had just realized that he had taken his entire test with his calculator set on the wrong mode, therefore, all of his answers, it was safe to assume, were wrong, Mr. T took a minute to calm him down, then told Nico that he would grade the tests over the weekend and see what he could do, get the tests back Monday, and come to find out that Mr. T had gone through every problem on Nico's test, following his work on a separate calculator with it set on the same mode as Nico's was during the test, and graded it based on Nico's understanding of how to solve the problems. He still ended up getting a C, but it still shows the level of commitment and respect he has for his students. One quick Thompson tale, the girl who sits in front of me is a foreign exchange student from Finland, with a name that has a syllable transition seldom seen in the US, of a, I believe her name is pronounced something like Pinya. The first class, Mr. T was having a few issues getting around her name, and finally said the following, I'm sorry, you'll have to excuse me, but I'm very old, life is very precious, and I don't know how much I have left, so in the name of making an efficient use of that time, 
Until I can create space in my old brain for your name, I'm going to have to call you Fez. I'm not a teacher. When I was in high school, I had, for lack of a better phrase, a tumultuous junior year. I ended up dropping out and getting my GED. I was in band, photography, and all AP courses. I was a great student, but my performance really started to suffer. To the point that I had teachers pull me aside and ask if I was okay. One even tried to stage an intervention. Anyway, I skipped all of my finals that year. Having already decided to drop out, my teachers all passed me with 70s. It was an incredible gesture. One that I won't ever forget. I did go on. Immediately. To university. My high school transcript basically disappeared after the get. But knowing that I had that kind of support from not just one but all of my teachers meant a lot. I feel like it's important to mention that these were not flaky teachers. They were tough AP teachers. They just saw something I, and my family, didn't. Former dance instructor and camp director. For my very young dance students, 3-5 yo. I had a bag full of ballet skirts for the girls to pick out and wear during class and a practice of handing out suckers for a job well done at the end of the class. If you didn't participate or didn't behave, you didn't get a sucker. Only once have I had to make a student return a skirt because she wasn't treating it kindly. She was trying to rip it apart. She pouted and refused to participate in class so she didn't get a sucker. I had to explain very patiently to her mother why her daughter was crying and being cross. Her mom sided with me. Next week, she was last in line to pick a skirt, but I never had a problem with her afterwards. Chatty students I separated. Camp was an older group and since I dealt with rowdy boys constantly, those punishments were the opposite of secret. I made it known that if you were sent to me, you were going to be seen at my side for the rest of the day, either quietly at my desk, eating lunch with the other staffers and I, quietly, and if we walked anywhere, you had to hold my hand. Given that my campers were old enough to know what embarrassment was, there were very few repeat offenders. I was a chemistry tay that taught intro lab sections a few years ago. Well, I had a student who made me dread one section. She was always late, rarely ever turned in a lab report, and only a fraction complete if she did, and never came to my office hours no matter how many times I told her she needed to get extra help. The worst was that she never prepared for the labs or paid attention during my prolab lecture so she would not have any idea what was going on. I constantly got questions about what lab we were doing. While well, everyone else was halfway done and whenever I heard glassware break, I knew exactly who did it without looking. Halfway through she had missed so many assignments it was an auto fail and I told her she should drop the class and take a W instead of an F. Well she blamed me and complained to the administration and accused me of being the reason she was failing. Instead of almost never turning anything in, nothing came of the complaint but still, that made me pretty upset. A few months into the next semester I got a request from the registrar for a retroactive drop for the class from this student because she failed it. That would take it completely off her transcript like it never happened. Typically they are supposed to be used for if a medical problem or family emergency completely wrecks someone's semester. I denied the request and itemize all of the reasons. We have a field trip coming up to a play. I teach at a private school. And one of the families had to sell a ton of stuff just to be able to pay the tuition this year for their three children. It's a very low tuition compared to most private schools. And it's the type of education that they really want for their children. So they've done everything possible to make sure they could send their kids this year. I knew that the $10 cost of the ticket for the field trip would be difficult for this family to cover. Last year we had a field trip with a $5 cost. And the kid came in with a baggie of quarters to cover it. So I paid for his ticket anonymously. It's not a huge thing but it meant a lot to this family. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.